Okay, but we don't have that much time. Rook g4 now, I would trade it. So he goes there. Can I checkmate this king? I, I do have some pieces. Do have some pieces. Can I checkmate you? Coming closer. I don't think I'm gonna quite get a checkmate. Maybe? <laughs> Actually, this is would be checkmate right now. Look at the bishops are doing such a great job. Actually, wait, it's and even king c1 rook here, the knight will control this. Actually, I checkmated this king <laughs> without a queen. I can prove him. This is mate. <laughs> That's so funny. Without a queen, just king in the middle of a wide open board. We tracked him down. That's actually so funny. I love that. Is he gonna stall me out? Oh, thanks so much for the uh, cheer. What do we got? From XBYG. Shout out. For the bit. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. Beta Dragon, Roll Stan, Ergo Proxy. Real Phoenician with the cheer. Shout out to you all for your support. Oh, Rick, look at this. We're at the top of the arena. Look at that. Got some nice wins in there. I berserked all the games. Let's don't move until you see it. Uh, 2200. Okay, let's not berserk. Let's not berserk. Also, because we're on a streak. And this is big stakes in the arena. We got a bush gas. One moment. One moment. I don't know where I put them. Why do I keep doing this? <laughs> Alright, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're just gonna fly. <laughs> got a bush gas accepted. This is exciting stuff, though. So we got the Stafford capture, D takes. We got Bishop operating. So we have this F5 line. We also have the Knight of 6 transposition into Stafford lines. Let's play Knight of 6. Against Knight C3, I generally play F5. Because I know Knight C3 is a good refutation to the Stafford, kind of. Knight of 6 and then H3. But the one advantage the Bush Gas gets over the Stafford in this specific line... So, okay, h3. Supposed to be some sort of mistake. It's like queen d4. Castles. So, if bishop e3, then we can um, grab this. Right? Otherwise, castles, we drop our queen back. And h4 first, perhaps? And h4. Okay, we'll drop back, maybe e5, d6. We'll drop back to d6. So, okay, we're attacking f2 just to try and encourage castles. If only Eric were here. Okay, we got castles. Queen comes back. So now we got him to castle. So now that's our new target. <laughs> so so pressure on f2, castle, so now the rook guard's there. But now there's no rook guarding here. So I want to play an hg4. And get him here. <laughs> Let's see if we can make this happen. So C3 makes a lot of sense trying to close this, but that's not my main point anymore. So, okay, what do we got? What do we got? So if pawn takes, pawn takes, and then the rook will help us get to H2. That's why this inclusion was so important. And there's no G3 at any point because queen takes, and I still have my bishop open pinning this pawn, So which allows for taking here. So otherwise, we're really coordinating there. I think pawn takes will get them checkmated immediately. E5 doesn't help. Take it. Rook E1 still gets them checkmated because queen H2, king F1, queen H1, king can't run. So we're looking at this. I think they have to play bishop takes G4. But then after pawn takes G4, I think they still look pretty toasted because 
I mean, I could play Bishop Takes, but why would I do that? It's not like they're going to take me. So I'll play Pawn Takes. So these can advance a little bit. Mm, kind of interesting. I mean, if I get like like two moves here, though, Takes, Takes, and then everything's open. So I can't take this because Rookie won, and my King is still in the middle, so that's not good. So let's shift over. Queen looks good here. Look at that. Queen, Rook, boom, boom. I hope Eric is proud of me. <laughs> yeah, glasses fail for real. Where do I put them? Uh, okay, d4. No worries, no worries. I didn't need that. I got other things. Take. Okay, well, there's g3 here. Um, I think g3 would have been a better move because I, I didn't have take g3. I didn't have that pin over here anymore. So queen f3, take, take, I can just take, take bishop h3, but I want to checkmate you. So bishop g4, queen g3, let's lead with this. Let's lead with this. Notice how this shouldn't be too important. We're equal on material right now, but... They have all these pieces dead, as is common in Staffords and Bush gases. So we're going to trade now. So now queen takes g2, and now I got him bishop g4 for free. And you can't really dodge this, because rook h1 is on the table. Well, certainly not there. But e1, for example, at minimum, I could just grab that rook. So you have to take this pawn. And queen takes g2. Oh, queen takes g2, I have bishop f3. A nasty move. Yes, queen takes g2, bishop f3, and then if you take my queen, I will take your king with the bishop defending. So king takes was played. Uh, what do we got here? Check, f3. I think rook h3 is, is just the strongest move here, honestly. Let's see. Yeah, check f3 here. They have rook f2, right? I don't have this open anymore. Uh, so rook h3 seems very strong and will probably do it. Because if they come out of the way here, then that will open this up and they'll just be toasted. Um, well, it's actually not that obvious. Bishop comes back. There's queen g5. Okay, but they gave it up. Do I throw in this? No. Just take it. And I can castle or I can play king up. <laughs> oh, castle. And rook will come here. And that should do it. That should do it. Nobody really left to defend the king. They brought in all the pieces, but we got rid of them. And I think that was a pretty good game. That was a pretty good game. I think queen f3 was their, was their error. Let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look at this one. just in time. All right, we'll analyze with them. So e45, a 3 bishop c5. That's actually nice. It only gave me a mistake. Typically, it gives me a blunder. Typically, I get two question marks. <laughs> All right, takes an ac6, uh, and they took it, right? So, I mean, there's a couple a couple lines here in the bush gas. Nate f3 is also, you see, you see uh, commonly at higher levels to not give us this d takes e6 capture. Nate f3, d5, um, some, some fun theory there. But takes, takes, so it's only plus two. Uh, after move five <laughs> and here knight of six so one of the advantages of the bush gas over the stafford is this other interesting option f5 that we can play and then when we play knight of six after it because we haven't blocked the pawn yet we got bishop c5 bishop always comes to c5 anyway uh but it's a lot of similarities with the stafford and this one was the direct transposition when we castle then we got both these files to work with kind of we can make this pawn trade and we got some nice targets so in fact it's telling me inaccuracy in f5 was best so in the game i played knight of six and engine one f5 bishop e2 to take away knight g4 which is the most common move h5 and uh, i believe the engine's recommendation here is c3 which launches some very fun lines known as the magical variation uh which the idea of c3 being to support d4 so d takes c6 did a couple things for us that that you, you guys are starting to see in this line number one it support it opened the bishop 
uh, to support knight g4. And number two, it opened the queen to, uh, to guard against d4, which forces c3 to, to play d4. And those were a couple key resources here. So c3, knight g4, d4, queen h4. Some fun lines here where we can try, where we can really uh, sacrifice a few things. Um, but of course, like the engine disapproves of all of this if white finds all the defenses. So h3, so I, tr I, I tried to get an h4, but uh, with h5, but they played h3. But this inclusion is going to be important for me, right? So I play your queen d4, threatening f2. And I know there's an interesting counter gambit here for white uh, to defend f2, which is bishop e3, takes and uh, just giving this rook, wherein white has now sacrificed an exchange, but now they've taken over the initiative, their king is totally safe, we can't castle, and uh, white has some center here, so it's kind of a, an interesting sort of position. But my opponent played the engine recommendation, which is castles, defending f2. But now we play queen d4, but we immediately drop back queen d6 because our new target's over here. So they played here c3, preparing d4, and knight g4, and bishop takes g4 was a blunder. So it's plus two here. So, okay, here's the key point, right? We're threatening queen h2 checkmate. There's no bishop f4, I can take it. There's no g3, because I can also take it, right? This is this this pin that becomes very important here. So our target, though, I mean, has switched from f2, because now the rook is here. So our target has switched to h2. We finally got them to castle, right? Which is a very strange way to attack. Like, oh, I provoked castling. You almost never see that, because you'd rather attack a king in the center than a castled king, but this is a rare sort of exception because our pieces are kind of primed to just kind of hit h2 as quick as possible. Uh, the engine want to hear e5, and the point, oh, the point is if queen takes e5, threatening queen h2, let me mute my phone, uh, then there's bishop takes g4, and now if we recapture, now my queen's on e5, and they're rookie one, whereas you see in the game, in the game, they did it in the other order. They played bishop takes g4 first, takes e5, and of course I'm not going to transpose and lose my queen, right? I'm going to play uh, here in the game, I play queen g6. But in this position, if you play e5, well, I have knight takes e5, but then there's no more checkmate threat. If I play queen g6, then you don't have to take this and transpose to the game, right? So so it's, it's, it's a key point about switching the move order because I'm no longer threatening checkmate. You don't have to take this knight. You don't have to touch this knight. Uh, you don't have to open this file for my rook with this pawn takes g4 recapture. So e5 here was important. I wonder if that means that I could have dropped back queen e5. I wonder if that's what that means. c3, knight g4. No, but then, then, my, then my queen's on e5 in this position, and d4 forks me, whereas on d6 it would have been a little bit better. So that's why if white finds all the defenses, it's just good for them. But queen d6, anyway, very tricky position. In fact, if I open the Lee Chess database here, this is a massive win rate for black. We're looking at 75% here for uh, um, games that black wins, if we just go to the sum of that, which is 75%. So even though it's a plus two position, which is kind of crazy. So anyway, castle queen d6, so c3 and h4, and here white must find this move e5, and I see only 9% of people have found it. 9% of games in this position have been with e5. So they played your bishop takes g4, but it's not over for them, because now after h takes g4, um, so white's castled, white's up a pawn, but this trade is going to threaten to blow everything open for them, and they cannot take it because of queen h2. And remember, they could never take with this pawn because uh, now they don't, don't even have the pawn in the way, and queen h2 is coming. And remember, there's no g3, I can take it. e5 here, there's still a bishop in the way, so no rook e1 uh, on my king. Uh, a rook e1 here only delays checkmate by, by one move. So in the game, let's continue in the game. Pawn takes g4, pawn takes g4. So I'm now trying to uh, open this up to coordinate my queen rook. e5 here, I think is oh, made a lot of logical sense to me. It's not a good move. d4 was correct. I guess these lines, white survives. But wow, white needs to be very... I guess white, white can hang on here by a threat. But d4, you ha they had to hit back, close this bishop. So e5 here and queen g6. So so I said they made a mistake after here. White's already losing. I've already played this correctly. And these g and h files are just going to kill them. If you take this, then I can step over to the h file and get you there. And then otherwise, yeah, these pawns are trading off. These files are opening up. So d4 now happens, but takes h3 and I'm threatening mate. I don't need to spend a tempo moving my bishop. I'm threatening mate here. So yeah, g3 would have been better. g3 would have been better, but it's just kind of delaying the inevitable because we have h2, king h1, and bishop g4. So I also have a light square bishop, by the way, and the light square bishop is going to try to get onto this diagonal. 
for example, any queen move here, and there's bishop f3, checkmate. And uh, here, I guess after f3, we play bishop, just bishop h3, attack the rook, and now we've made that pawn move. So really, uh, everything's collapsing here for, for white. I can also castle long, which would save my bishop with the pin, and we're not even down any material at this point. A white just has no development and a blown open king. But at the minimum, they should have tried to minimize the pawn trades in front of their king, keep as many pawns in, in front as possible so that all my files don't open up. But queen f3 was played here, bishop to g4. So I could have just taken g2, right, and had this position. But I was like, why wouldn't I just have this position with bishop g4, queen g3, and now takes. And now I have, like, the, the, the same position, but my bishop was on c8. And now it's on g4, right? So queen takes g2, and here my opponent in the game played king takes g2. If rookie won, this is what I was saying in the game, check and takes at minimum. Um, but, oh, I think this is even nastier. And it, it's it's the same idea, uh, threatening rook h1, uh, next move no matter what. It's the same idea in this position with bishop f3, takes, and rook h1. So I think bishop f3 here um, seals the deal, which is why they played king takes g2. My opponent was a strong player. But now rook h3, forcing this queen to move, and is just going to open this up. So queen f4, uh, oh, so I... I, I'm not looking at the engine or anything, but now that I see this, I think bishop f3 check, king takes h3, and check, king h4, and I guess we, or, or rook on h8 would be great, we could even castle and make that happen, but we have this bishop e7, and queen g5, and queen g4, <laughs> nice uh, checkmate, I think that was all force, bishop f3 check would have ended it, that would have been pretty, in the game queen takes h3 was played, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, the engine was just recommending losing the queen, so it's kind of hopeless for them anyway. We trade everything, castles, and we use all our pieces. It's always so pretty when you use all the pieces, like Paul Morphy in the Opera House game, and the rook is going to swing over there. So subscribe if that goes on YouTube. I think that was, that was a nice one. I don't regret any move I played. I think I did that attack well, and Eric, I hope you're proud of me. <laughs> yeah, say hi to YouTube. All right, let's go back to that arena, because we were winning, and now... I spent a long time analyzing, so we got to catch up. <laughs> yeah, I went full lecture mode. <laughs> William Graves, the Gambit Man, takes his seat at the board. E4. E5. Knight F3. Bishop C5. The Bush Gas Gambit on the board. On with the Gambit classes. Hero Pod unlocked. 